the Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Later in the program, we will bring you an important message from Mr. J. Edgar Hoover on our nation's internal security. A shrewd psychologist who has had contacts with numerous leaders of American business once remarked, Success and self-confidence go hand in hand. Men who have a strong conviction that they are going to succeed are the ones who rise to the top in every field. For people of this type, people who have this feeling of certainty about themselves, the Equitable Life Assurance Society has created its famous life insurance plan for men and women on the way up. Do those words describe you? Then you'll be interested in about 14 minutes when I give full details of the Equitable Plan for men and women on the way up. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Fraud. Its title, The Profiteers. In every country, there are a few greedy and unscrupulous individuals who try to take advantage of a wartime emergency. War to these chiselers is not a time for sacrifice. It is a golden opportunity for illegal profits. Tonight's case from the official files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation dates back to World War II. It was chosen to serve as a reminder that America must always be on its guard against the type of man who puts his pocketbook above patriotism. To wives and mothers of servicemen today, this file should also serve as a reassurance. It shows that law enforcement agencies like the FBI are constantly alert for criminals to whom money is more important than the lives of our fighting men. Tonight's FBI file opens on a sandy stretch of desert in North Africa back in the year 1943. Some distance from Tunis, a company of GI infantry is pinned down waiting for their artillery support to strike at an enemy concentration. As the artillery shells continue to fall beyond the lines, a weary soldier shuffles through the early dawn toward a shallow foxhole. Hey, Bert. Huh? Oh, hi, Jake. Come on. We're moving up already? No. The phone's gone dead at the CP. Not again. You gotta find out where the lines broke. How come we get all the easy jobs? Pull, I guess. You got some wire? Mm. Artie's got the spool. Been out since Chow. Here's the line. No, I checked it this far. Let's keep going. If these flies get any bigger, I'm gonna throw a saddle in them. They wouldn't let you ride. This is the infantry. Nothing wrong with the wire so far, Jay. It's broke somewhere. I know, but... Hey. Huh? Up there. Guy stretched out. Come on. It's Artie. Yeah. He gone? <sighs> Not yet. Let's open up his shirt. Oh, they got him real good. Where's the sniper? He probably wondered, too. Must have stopped here to fix the line. There's a the break. He already fixed it. Huh? See the splice? And what was he doing? Jake, look at the wire coming off that spool. It's all full of splits. How do they expect anybody to fix a line with that stuff? Well, we better get Artie back to the medics. 
Grab his other arm. Yeah. First! First! Down, Jake! <laughs> Medic! Medic! Come and get us! A few months later, at an FBI field office in the eastern part of the United States, Special Agent Jim Taylor is at his desk when a friend approaches. Morning, Jim. Oh, hi, Bird. How's the leg? Okay, if I throw enough weight on the cane. Grab a chair. Thanks. Jim, I need some help. Name it, Bert. If I can do anything, you know I will. I never told you how I got this leg. I wanted to straighten everything out myself, but I can't, so that's why I'm here. Bert, I don't think I understand. My outfit was near Tunis. We stopped when our artillery couldn't zero in on some German tanks because the phone from our command post went dead. A friend of mine named Artie French went out after Chow with a spool of wire to fix the break in the line. When he didn't come back, two of us were sent out after him. Just after we found him, the same sniper who shot Artie got me and my pal. That's tough. Well, I saved some of that wire, and... Well, Jim, it was just plain no good. It came apart in your hand. Here, take a look for yourself. This it? Uh-huh. I found numbers on the spool. They were a quartermaster code for the company that makes this stuff. Uh-huh. I found out it's the cable company right here in town. About the one out on the turnpike? Yeah. I've heard from the quartermaster corps. They've had other complaints about wire from them, so... When I was discharged from the hospital, I went out there and I got a job. Oh, didn't the Army check them? Yeah, they always got the same answer. And wire must have gone bad after it left the plant. I see. I'd like to see the FBI take a good look at that factory, Jim. Well, Bert, we can't just decide to investigate a place. I I know how you feel, but, well, there's got to be more evidence. Well, how about this? Yesterday, I cut this piece of wire off a spool with an okayed inspection tag on it. That's as bad as the stuff I brought back from Africa. Look for yourself. See. Don't have to be an electrician to see that. Yeah. I'll leave the samples, will you? Sure. I'll have the lab run some tests, and we'll see what we can do. Frank, can I see you a minute? Sure. Small problem department. Oh, what is it? We've got a visitor outside, an FBI man. Well, we'll take care of him. You're the general manager. What does he want? He showed me a couple of strands. Says there's been a complaint about them. Can't you handle that? I didn't try to. Why not? My job is turning out the wire. What happens to it after it leaves here is your business. What'd you tell him? I asked him to wait. Where is he now? Out by the cashier's desk. You know, Frank, three inspections in six months. That's a little heavy. When I moved you up to the foreman's job, Joe, you knew what the deal was, and you went along with it. I know I did, but this... Send the FBI man in here. You get things lined up over the plant. By the time we finish giving him the treatment, we'll have the FBI for a customer. You send for me, Mitch? Yes, Jim. The SAC wants you to turn in all your files. Why, what's up? Well, he's putting you on that cable company case. I thought Harrison went out there. He did. And as far as he could tell, the inspection machines were working perfectly. Well, then why are we still on the case, Mitch? Well, I have a lab report here on the wire samples. Yeah. Not one of them should have passed a legitimate inspection. And Harrison only saw what they wanted him to, huh? Yeah, it appears that way. But, Jim, is your GI friend still working out at the plant? Yeah. Well, we want you to go out there tomorrow and get a job. They're advertising for men. But don't use your friend for reference. Well, should I try and get to any special department? Stop by the lab and see Doc Hanson. He'll tell you what to look for. What test is this, Doc? Well, it's called pre-aging. The samples of wire are in those metal cylinders. Yeah, I see. After the water's heated, this valve here... Automatically opens and applies pressure on the wire. Now, what for? Mm, to see if it'll stand up under rough conditions in the field. The wire takes a tougher physical than a human being. Well, it's supposed to, anyway. Come over here, Jim. 
Now, uh, this is the last machine. Yeah. It's called the sparking tester. Finished wire runs through these coils charged with electricity. Yes, sir. And here, here's a spool of wire where the insulation's unbroken. Now, look, I'll, uh, I'll run part of it through. Except for the noise of the wires running through the coils, you heard nothing, huh? That's right. Now, I'll put on a spool of defectively insulated wire. Mm-hmm. There. Hey, what's that? Well, each time there's a break in the insulation, this buzzer sounds off. Yeah? Now you're an expert, Jim. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, uh, when do you go out there? Tomorrow morning. Hi, Mr. Hudson. Hello, John. Nice day, Mr. Hudson. Fine, fine. Frank, I want to talk to you. Oh? Come on in the office. Go ahead. Right. Well, what is it? I want out. Out of what? This deal. I'm sorry, Joe. The officials of the company cut me in on the profits because they knew I'd run the place the right way. You're part of my team. I can't afford to lose you. You're going to. What do you think would happen if the FBI found out about your part in the deal? How could they find out about me? Somebody might call them. You? Man's inhumanity to man is a terrible thing, Joe. When I've got the time, we'll discuss it. Right now, though, I'm busy, so get back over to the plant. Well, I don't know. Go I'm... on, boy. Go back to work. Okay. But if I stay, I don't want any more trouble. There won't be any. I've got the solution to all our problems. Come back after the whistle blows, and I'll tell you all about it. Hey, your name Bert Morrow? That's right. I'm from the front office. You've been punching your time card wrong. Will you come here? I'll show you how to do it. Okay. You find anything yet, Bert? No. You checked the machine again? We just about took it apart this morning. Another report came through from the lab. The samples you gave me yesterday tested good all the way. Well, I'll get this. And maybe I'll ask Joe Stone to transfer me to another machine. No, no, you stay put. Jim, can't you come up with anything out of all those books in the front of us? I'm working on a new angle now. It might pay off. What is it? I got up a list this afternoon of where every shipment of wire went during the last three weeks. What for? Well, before the spools are shipped overseas, I want to have samples re-examined. The lab's all set up to give me quick reports. As soon as I leave here tonight, I'll start calling every Army depot on the list. Jim, how are you coming out the factory? Kind of slow, Mitch. Have you got any definite leads? No. Well, then I'm afraid we'd better close the investigation. What? Write a report for me and go back to your old cases. Good, Mitch. I know something's going on out there. Well, you've seen the lab reports. Every sample we got from those Army depots last week tested perfect on every machine. Yeah, I know. Now, we've gone over the records of every government inspector assigned to the plant. And they're all clean. But I still have some files in the office out there. I should go Jim, through. The general in charge of supplies for this port called this afternoon. Eh? He said if we don't stop slowing up deliveries on the wire, he'll go to Washington with his complaint. Well, doesn't he realize we're trying to protect soldiers' lives? Sure, but he's got a job the same as we have. He's got to get that wire overseas. Now, look, we did find the samples shipped out of the factory before the 17th of this month were 50% bad. Well, all those spools have been recalled. All right, Mitch, but why should they produce 50% bad wire up to a certain date and then start turning out a perfect product after that? I don't know, Jim. And I'm not criticizing you for not finding out. I can only tell you we can't take the pressure much longer. How much time can you give me? Well, I should be taking you off the thing right now. Let me have another two weeks, Mitch. All right, but that's it. Two weeks. 
By then, you've either got to come up with definite evidence or drop the case. We will return shortly to tonight's case from the official files of your FBI. Now for a moment, let's consider an entirely different type of case. The story of Jack Morley, a man who realized that there's no end to the frontiers of American opportunity. Jack was a milkman. In the dawn's early light, he delivered much more than milk. He delivered himself up that rugged road of success. He got so many new customers that pretty soon, well, you tell him, Jack. Well, the company I worked for put me in their sales department. And Jack's giving that job his best, too. He's got a lot more responsibilities, and he's making more money. Back when Jack was driving the milk truck, he dreamed of getting ahead. His Equitable Society representative had a strong hunch that Jack was a fellow whose dreams would come true. He told Jack about the Equitable Plan for Men and Women on the Way Up, a life insurance plan for people whose future held real promise of greater achievement, greater income, and responsibility. The Equitable Plan is perfect for that ambitious type. Because it's flexible, it's geared to give you more insurance coverage as you cover more ground on the road to success. It's life insurance that grows as you grow. As my salary went up, the options in my equitable plan made it simple for me to keep my insurance in line with my income. Another fine thing about the equitable plan is that its cost is exceptionally low during the first few years. Yet your family gets the life insurance protection they need. That low cost at the start was just what the doctor ordered. I didn't have to go in the hole to pay for my insurance. Whatever you do, whatever your age, why not take a tip from Jack Morley? Let your Equitable Society representative tell you about the Equitable Plan for men and women on the way up. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Now back to the FBI file, The Profiteers. Deliberately turning out defective arms, ammunition, or other equipment for our armed forces is beyond question one of the lowest crimes known to man. Actually, It is at least four crimes in one, combining murder, grand larceny, sabotage, and treason in one loathsome package. This is a revolting crime. But happily, your FBI is able to report that it is an exceedingly uncommon one. Even among our present prison population, it would probably be difficult to find many men willing to perform such an act of betrayal for any price. Consider the hundreds of thousands of contracts and subcontracts completed by patriotic American industry during World War II. Then remember that the case selected for dramatization tonight was all the more notorious because of its extreme rarity. That such a crime is seldom committed is, however, no excuse for lack of vigilance. During today's emergency, the men of your FBI give you this solemn pledge that they will take every measure to protect our fighting men and industry itself from a stab in the back like the one you are hearing about tonight. Tonight's FBI file continues a week later in the factory office of General Manager Frank Hudson. Foreman Joe Stone has just entered. Joe, things are picking up. We got a Navy order today. For what? Why? What else? But we can't handle the business we've got. Got the men on overtime now. I know. Well, should we put on a whole new shift? No need for that. All we have to do is go back to using the rejects. Not me, Frank. I didn't call you up here to discuss this, Joe. Those are orders. Suppose the FBI comes back. We've been turning out perfect wire for a month now. Have you got any idea what that's done to our profits? I don't care. Well, I do. I'm operating this plant on a percentage. The less profits, the less I get. Now, I'll be here tonight at the usual time, Joe. Don't be late.
Bert. Yes, Jim. Bert, I think I may have a lead. What? I just finished checking the sign-in book from the front gate. Joe Stone and Frank Hudson used to come back to the factory every night around midnight. You know why? No, but they stopped on the 16th of last month. All right, the next day the wire started coming through perfect. I wonder why they quit. I don't know, but they made another midnight visit last night. Oh? How's your machine been working today? You haven't had a single reject. Well, that means I'm on the right track. What are you going to do? Try and get some proof. Oh. By being here tonight in case they do come back... Mitchell speaking. Mitch, this is Jim Taylor. Yes, Jim. Can you meet me tonight? Sure. Fine. I'll need a hand movie camera. What for? Well, I think the general manager and the foreman rigged the machines around midnight. Now, if we can get pictures of them doing the rigging, that should be all the proof we need. Well, any place out there to hide while we take the pictures? Yeah, we can perch up on top of the lockers, have a clear view of the whole place. You need anything besides the camera? No. Well, what time you want to meet? Well, how's 11 o'clock in the factory parking lot? I'll be there. Fine. That'll give us an hour to get inside, set up the camera, and go into action. Jim, that's 12.30. Yeah, I know. Do you ever show up this late? Not very often. Tough for sure to mind it. It's them. Start the camera. Okay. Take this machine first. All right, hand me that wrench. Stay with the fuses. I'll go and switch the tags. Come in when you're through. Right. Getting it, Jim. Yeah. I think that's the last fuse. the door into the storeroom. I might as well cut the camera. Right. Any machines in that room? No, it's probably where they remove the tags from the spools that have been approved and switch them on to rejects. Well, you know the layout in there? Not too well, Mitch. I'll go in tomorrow, find a place we can use for cover tomorrow night. We'll take some more pictures. <laughs> Mitchell speaking. Mitch, this is Jim. Where are you? I'm out at the factory. I can't talk too long. The SAC looked at that film yet? Just now. And he says there's not enough evidence. What? Well, he pointed out Hudson and Stone might claim they were repairing the machine instead of rigging it. At that time of night? Well, there's no proof in the film what time it is. Yeah, I know, Mitch, but they oh, How about enough... getting pictures of them tonight in the storeroom? Oh, there's no chance, Mitch. There's no cover at all in that place. Well, got any other ideas? Just one. Well, what is it? Well, you contact Harrison. See if he can arrange to have two inspectors. Frank, we're in trouble. What happened? There are a couple of FBI men outside, and one of them's the agent who was out here last month. Harrison? Yeah. And there are two government inspectors with him that I never saw before. They want to go through the plant right away. Stall them. I don't think we can. Go out and tell them the rules are that no one enters the plant area without a personal pass from me. I told them that. Then send them in here. I'll hold them while you get the sparking tester fixed. How can I fix the sparking tester? The plant's full of men working. Give them a ten-minute break. While they're out, you'll have more time than you need. Now run along.
Here he comes, Bert. What do I do? Just stay by the machine. Hello, Mr. Stone. Well, who are you? I work in the office. Well, go back up there. Tomorrow you're supposed to be taking a break. There's something wrong with my machine. I'll fix it on a company's time. Well, look, Mr. Stone, if it breaks down, I'll get laid off. We don't treat our men that way. Go on outside, both of you. So you can tamper with that machine? What? That's your idea, isn't it? What's your name? Taylor. What department you work in? Bookkeeping. You're fired. Go get your time. Oh, I've got another job, Mr. Stone. Here are my credentials. FBI. That's right. You're under arrest. Jim, here comes Hudson. Look, he's the boss. Yes, I know, Mr. Stone. This other warrant has his name on it. Frank Hudson, Joe Stone, and two officials of the cable company all pleaded guilty in federal court of fraud against the government and were given both heavy fines and prison sentences. In addition, the corporation was fined $10,000. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is a vital message on our nation's internal security from J. Edgar Hoover, director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Mr. Hoover's message is, and I quote, the nation's internal security program is cast on a nationwide premise. The FBI has been assigned the specific responsibility of coordinating all investigations of espionage, sabotage, and subversive activities within the continental United States and the territorial possessions. Only through a national coordinated program of investigation may subversive forces be uncovered and effectively countered. Activity in a single community may be only a fragment of the whole operation. To be successful, the local effort must be coordinated with the national effort, and in this, the local authority's principal responsibility is to report the information to the federal agency which has the authority to act. All law enforcement agencies, patriotic groups, and loyal citizens have a part in this program. <laughs> Now we would like to leave you one last thought about the equitable plan for men and women on the way up. This plan was created for one particular type of person. It's designed for the man who is confident that someday he'll tell his wife... Hey, Barbara, they're going to give me a chance at McLean's old job with a real raise in pay. Are you confident that someday you too will get ahead? Then don't wait another day. Ask your Equitable Society representative to work out your own personal plan for a man on the way up. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, Illegal Gambling. Its title, The Corruptors. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacy Harris. Others in the cast were Ed Begley, Dick Trenner, Hal Dawson, Lamont Johnson, Vernon Rich, and Adam Williams. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Corruptors on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This program came to you from Hollywood. <laughs>